let's hear more from Zita Holden. Thank you. I'd like to start by um, thanking Sasha Selassie for um, you know, calling this meeting on this topic because it's an important issue um, and also for inviting me to, to speak. Um, Mark has obviously covered quite a bit about PCS so I'm going to sort of start on, the, on Barrack. And Barrack was um, founded to stand up against the disproportionate impact of cuts on black communities, black workers and black service users. And as we've um, gone on since 2010 when we were founded, we've actually had some of our focus on fighting the injustice of the condemn agenda, effectively. Because it's not just about the cuts, it's about their whole attitude on race and a lot of the other things that they're doing in terms of social policies. Um, the public sector is the biggest employer of black workers and the majority of the, those black workers are black women and that, this means that black women are bearing the, the brunt of public sector cuts. Um, in addition to the public sector, the voluntary sector has a high proportion of both black employees but also black service users and the slashing of the uh, Equality and Human Rights Commission granting aid and slashing of council budgets for the voluntary sector is seeing specialised and tailored services ceasing to existing communities. And they're often um, services that wouldn't be provided otherwise through local or central government. And um, they tailor particularly for black communities, but also for a whole range of other equality groups. And they include race councils and advisory services for those um, that are facing racism, including um, services providing legal representation and support. There are over one million young people unemployed currently, and the figure is rising all the time, but one in two young black people, and these are black people, um, young people aged between 18 and 24, are unemployed. And after last summer's riots, the TUC and The Guardian ran, um, well, they carried out research which told everybody, well, actually, Barrett knew for two days after the, the riots or uprisings and what we were saying in, in meetings up and down the UK, that um, the areas where, the vast majority of the areas where riots took place were areas that were classified, officially classified as deprived, and um, they were also areas that had the highest take-up of the education maintenance um, allowance when it existed before that was slashed. And um, involved in the riots was a whole host of ages and um, races. But what we saw was a demonisation of um, young people in general by the government and the media but stereotyping specifically of young black people who were blamed by the likes of Starkey for um, the actions of young white people. So, you know, they, effectively what they were saying is white people weren't responsible for their actions, it was all the fault of black people, they made them act like that. We were to blame. Um, the slashing of EMA and the tripling of tuition fees for um, university has led to a reduction in the number of poor young people that can actually go into further and higher education. And again, they're disproportionately black. And because their families are also likely to be the people whose jobs are being cut, pay is being frozen, have to pay more into their pensions, they're not in a position to help their, their, um, you know, their children with those extra costs. And we've just gone through last month with working tax credit being slashed for a lot of families. And that's another cut to, to people's um, salaries. And I just wanted to mention that um, a message from uh, Stafford Scott, who couldn't be here tonight, which has already been mentioned, a message of solidarity and greetings. And Stafford has been central to supporting um, Mark Duggan's family. And what we shouldn't forget is those riots started because yet another, and I say yet another because there's been a series of them, young black man was murdered at the hands of the state, in this case, 
by the police and you probably would have remembered all the news coverage where they said he shot a gun, he fired a gun, it was found he didn't have a gun, the other gun that was fired was also by police. So they lied, they treated the family very disrespectfully, they didn't actually notify the family in the correct procedure, um, you know, when uh, Mark was killed. And when it came to the vigil that was held before the riot that actually took place in Tottenham, the police, the local police station, refused to send anybody out to address the vigil and speak to the family. Um, and then police, riot police, were the ones that threw something at one of those people that was at the vigil. And the vigil was made up of largely um, black women and black young people, black children. Um, so what we've seen is a series of um, cases where families who are not activists are finding themselves having to fight injustice and fight for years to try and get justice. And we've seen what happened with Stephen Lawrence, that that's not even over now. There's um, a call for a second inquiry because of the way things happened. We've got a new far right in the EDL, and I'm speeding up my, my speaking now because I've seen the two minute sign. Um, who have um, really, have not just attacked black people, but they've actually been attacking trade unionists in our offices, in our PCS regional offices, and on our picket line um, very recently. And the EDL are allowed to parade their hatred on our streets, but they also point the finger at black people and migrant people when it comes to the lack of housing and the lack of jobs, rather than looking at the real reasons for those. And through um, race law and policies, really, we should have made a lot more progress than we have to date in terms of fighting racism and race equality. Um, you know, I hoped that the struggles my mother Kate went through when she came here from Trinidad and I went through as a child, my son wouldn't have to face. But my son is 18, he's going to face the triple tuition fees, there's no jobs out there for him, so he's actually facing a whole host of um, issues. And the actions of the far right and the attitudes of um, the Condemn Coalition, who don't care at all um, about race equality, about justice, has led to people being emboldened. People that hold racist views, but they normally keep those inside, now feel quite emboldened to go out in public. And we've seen, because of new technology, people recording um, you know, racist abuse, um, happening on tubes in public arenas and then sticking those on YouTube, which has actually led to several of them being caught, which is actually quite, quite, quite um, good, because if they weren't captured on YouTube in that way, they probably wouldn't have been caught. David Cameron's speech that he made in um, Munich when he declared that multiculturalism had failed has done nothing to improve the situation for black people because when he said that multiculturalism had failed, he wasn't talking about his Eton chums and his Oxbridge you know, circles. He was talking about poor people, working class people, black people. Um, and multiculturalism is not dead. Multiculturalism is very much alive. Actually, it's our multicultural communities that make the UK vibrant. Um, you know, it's our diversity that enriches the UK. And I think in order to fight the racism that we face today, we need to stand united, not just um, black people having to fight in that struggle. We need white people to fight alongside us. And it isn't just about going along to protests, signing petitions, when the EDL are there going to a counter demonstration. It's about when you witness racism on the street, in a shop, in wherever you're passing, and you see it happening, stand there, observe what's happening with the police, um, intervene, speak out about it, because if you don't challenge it, it's that kind of racism below the surface that will continue to, to grow and develop. And my time is definitely up, so I'm going to stop now. Thank you.